Y2K? Remember what you did that day where you scared the machines would turn on us all? Or maybe your phone just wouldn't work. Maybe aliens would come to Earth. Could have been a mushroom cloud or heaven's bugle call. Me and some friends took a trip way down south. We were on a beach hanging out with folks from all over the world, feeling nothing but fine. We drank until we got demented. Counted down for each time zone representative party like it was 1999. Except it actually was. It wasn't just a figurative thing. And when it turned 2000, we just kept on partying. It was getting kind of silly by that point. Stumbling around, yelling at clouds. The new millennium was looking pretty messy so far. But you can't always party daily and nightly. Not everyone takes those kind of things lightly. Some folks got more serious concerns. Take William Miller. Back in 1818, with all the scripture he'd been studying, he got to figuring out when Jesus would return. And once he was done calculating, he got to proselytizing and debating. Within several years, he'd rounded up thousands more. They had pamphlets and meetings. The more the merrier, saying God would cleanse the sanctuary or something like that. October 1844. And after waiting years for their coming king, they started giving away everything, unconcerned with possessions or employment. But when the day finally rolled around and Jesus was nowhere to be found, they had what was called the Great Disappointment. Some said they botched their calculations, used the wrong calendar, the wrong computations. He was still coming just a few months or years later. Some other folks just figured they'd been wrong, figured they'd better try and keep their home and think of a way to explain it to the neighbors. And somehow find the wherewithal to stop that pantry after all. Heck, maybe they should even go and see the dentist. But some other folks insist that it really did happen, just not on Earth, but up in Heaven, and they became the Seventh-day Adventists. If there's any Adventists here tonight, I really don't want to offend you. Really, I got friends who are Adventists. I mean, I met one one time. Besides, we've all got crazy ideas of our own. For instance, I thought this would be a nice little subject to write a song about. Back in the first century, off the Turkish coast, on a little Greek island called Patmos, a guy wrote down a bunch of visions he thought reliable. And rather than asking, what's this guy on? People named it the Apocalypse of John. 300 years later, they decided it was in the Bible. And I grew up believing it would all come true, just when and how, nobody knew. But God was coming back to get his best done. First time by water, next time fire, righteous and wicked to divide, and we'd get a new world in exchange for this one. And it was going to happen soon, because things are obviously getting worse. There's no turning it around. There's no saving this earth. There's nothing worth saving anyway. You got men marrying men, men marrying dogs, trees. Next thing you know, some guys get to marry his truck. It's just wrong. to believers who are getting nervous to ease their mind about their dogs and cats. Because pets don't get raptured, you see. So these folks say for a small fee, they'll feed and walk in the unlikely event of that. And boy, if it happens like they say and all the believers are born away, you can be sure those atheists will come around then. Once they find out they lost the bet, they'll take real good care of your pets. It might be their last chance left in getting in. It's written, no man knows the day of the Lord, but I saw it on some big billboards. Harold Campman figured it out and wrote it up high. God must have thought, who's this hat? Maybe he's even planning to come back and then didn't just to spite the poor old guy. One day, 21st went by, people laughed, but he stuck to his guns. He said it had been a spiritual event, not a physical one. And the real thing was coming October 21st, 2011. Poor Harold, he kind of lost his enthusiasm for predictions after that. 2012 is going to be big, right? That shit was gonna be tight. They had special calculations we could rely on. This wicked old world's gotta make room. It's the start of a new back tune, according to the calendar of minds. And those mind dudes may have been rough, but they sure did make some amazing stuff, and they really must have been rapidly evolving. They didn't waste time with messy elections. They put the pedal down on natural selection by cutting off your head if you lost a ball game. But what do they think 2012 would mean? Would the polls reverse? Would the sun
sun turned green when we see the planet Nibiru? Would it destroy man? Or was it the dawn of the Aquarian Age? Our ascension to another vibratory stage without war and justice, materialism, or boy bands? Terence McKenna predicted the singularity with all the hard-earned sincerity and certainty that goes with dedicated research. So he made a computer program through the I Ching Age so let's have a mushrooms and some other things. As a result, he's about as sure as anyone on Earth. Funny thing about being sure, the more you are, the less I believe you. Especially if it's that crazy eyed foaming at the mouth kind of sure. Kind of no matter what happens, it still proves you're right. And if you don't see it, it's just more of a hidden spiritual thing. Anybody see a pattern here? Well, we're pretty good at getting it wrong. This song would be even more stupidly long if I tried to tally up everybody's guesses. One thing in common with all these tales, they depend on someone besides ourselves, as if we won't have to clean up our own messes. As if we're the last people on earth, as if these times are the craziest there ever were, as if we're not just holding space here for our grandkids. As if it's all gonna turn to black and white and everyone's gonna see the light and convincing won't be as hard as it always is. Like we won't have to change minds one by one, it'll just happen, it'll just get done. We won't need to take time with all the messy stuff. Like building bridges, loving people in, realizing when we're wrong even, and learning to stop when we've had enough. Sounds like a pretty tall order, right? God help us, you say. Or what? It's going to take a miracle to save us from ourselves. What if we're the only miracle we've got? This world's got to end. This world's got to end. It's on us to make a new one, my this world's got to end. This world's got to end. It's on us to make a new one, my friend.